I'm really bad at this, okay? I don't really know what I'm doing. Yes, this is weird. I'm sat here without makeup on, straight out the shower, with a kitchen full of makeup. And there is a reason for this. Um, probably not what you think. I had people come around to inspect the pipes in my bathroom and I had to move everything out of the bathroom and I moved it all here. And I thought, while I'm here, let's talk about makeup. Because the minute that I posted this on Instagram, because, you know, I was like, oh, look at all my makeups. Uh, but the minute I posted it on Instagram, the influx of messages from men being like, oh, that's a lot of makeup. You don't need that much makeup. Why do you have so much? You're so much better looking without it. And I was like, not the point. Do you ask me why I have so many books? Do you say that I'm smart enough without all these books? Do you ask me why I have so many board games? Because I'm fun enough without all these board games. Do you ask me why I have so many paints and art supplies? Because, you know, I'm, I, I don't know, interesting enough without art? I don't, anyway, I, it, it, it's hard to find a comparison. The point is, it kind of, once again, which has been happening a lot of the three years since I started YouTube, got me thinking so much about how we view makeup in the world and all the judgments we put on people for if they wear it, if they don't, how much they wear, how little they wear, how much they own, how little they own. It feels like there's no right way to do this. And no matter what you do, never mind if you're a man or a woman or non-binary, people are always going to complain about you when it comes to makeup. You're never going to be good enough for most people. Hello, baby. I love you, but you can't jump up today because you've got your fleeing stuff on and you're going to make me smelly. You're going to make me smelly. You don't want to be a smelly bear. So I figured I would just do a bit of an unplanned video, unscripted, just kind of talk at you a little bit and maybe reference some of these goodies. Um, and then at the end I'm going to move over and I'm going to read some of your comments on this because I asked you some questions over on my community tab and over on Instagram and you guys have been giving me your answers and we're going to be looking at them and kind of discussing them at the end of this video. Like I say, it feels a lot like no matter what you do when it comes to makeup, people take it the wrong way, or at least some people will, and that's kind of just what I'm finding with life at the minute. And the thing is, it's kind of odd, is that recently in the past few years, since I've been getting more confident in my makeup and since I've been improving my skills, and just since I've got more confident in myself, I don't necessarily think so much anymore about what the makeup I'm putting on my face says about me. Because to me, when I do that makeup, I think, well, I'm doing this because it's creative, or this says I'm trying to look like Starfire, this says I'm trying to be arty, or, or this is because I wanted to use such and such a product or try out this new technique I saw. And that's my thought process going into the makeup. So I don't necessarily think about what people think that says about my personality, if that makes sense. And even when I do think about that stuff, I find it very hard to read and understand what other people think, which is a bit of an issue at times. On the one hand, it's very freeing because it means I always just do what I want and not what other people expect me to do or what they want me to do. But on the other hand, it's very frustrating because then I start to wonder, well, what if I'm giving off an impression that I don't want to give off? Or what if I'm, you, you know, um, making people judge me in a certain way that I didn't intend? And it's, it's quite scary in that respect when you think about it afterwards. I also like see so much stigma though for people who if they don't wear makeup people say that they're lazy or if they wear too much makeup people think they're high maintenance or whatever and it just, it's very bizarre to me and like my ex who massive douchebag he was very abusive but that's nothing to do with this he quite liked wearing makeup sometimes and um, but he didn't really have the skills to apply it very well, so sometimes he would ask me to do his makeup for him, which is absolutely fine. I enjoyed doing it. It was lovely. It was one of the few times we actually, you know, everything was nice and calm and happy. And I remember this one time, I, I, we were literally just staying in and it was going to be date night, and he asked me to do his makeup for him, like, while we were getting ready. So I sat in the lift, not the room, the, um, I sat in the kitchen of his parents' house doing his makeup for him, and some guys came down who were staying there for, like, Airbnb stuff. And they were like, oh no, what she roped you into now, how she convinced you to do this. And it was a bit like, he asked me, he likes wearing makeup, this is okay. Why does it always have to be the woman's roped a man into wearing it? Why does there always have to be some, I don't know, some, some judgement? Why can't it just be normal for people to wear makeup? Like, no matter who you are. 
And the thing is, while I think it should be normalised for everyone to be able to wear makeup and make their own personal choices about makeup, I also kind of feel like people who don't wear makeup shouldn't be making judgments on people who do. And mostly this is men making judgments about women, but not completely. So I don't want to make this a gendered thing. But the amount of people who say, well, I prefer people who don't wear makeup. I prefer people with this amount of makeup. I prefer, and it's like, well, it's not your face, is it? It doesn't really matter what you prefer. It's quite frustrating, I find. It's like, okay, well, tell me what you prefer if I'm doing your makeup, but not if it's nothing to do with you. If you're just having to look at my face, then don't take this the wrong way, but I don't really care what your opinion is on my makeup, as long as I feel good about it. If I'm asking for feedback saying, hey, I tried this new technique, what would you, like, how would I improve? Then yes, I want feedback, but in the sense of, well, with this in mind, maybe try using this product like this, or like this, or whatever. I don't want the feedback to be, well, I don't really like women who wear eyeliner, so... Because I'm like, well, I don't care. I want to wear eyeliner. I want to know how I do it better, for example. And I do find myself getting quite, like, defensive about these kinds of things now, because it's so exhausting. And especially when people who think they're, like, giving you a compliment, they're being like, oh, well, you look so much better without it. And I'm like, you think I look better without it? I think I'm enjoying doing makeup. Why do I care if you find my face aesthetically pleasing or not? I don't. Just in like when I do like artwork and stuff and I, I paint a lot and I have a lot of my paintings around my flat and I often post them on Instagram and stuff it's because I want to share that with people and I want to say look I did a thing but mostly I do all that painting and drawing because I enjoy the process and I love at the end of it being like look I made this thing I did this I had these creative thoughts and feelings and now it's on paper, let me share this with the world. And it's kind of like a celebration of joy. I don't necessarily want people to be like, well I don't really like watercolour paints so I don't think you should use them anymore. Why are you just sucking the joy out of everything? One thing that you guys have brought up that I didn't really think about before that I find very very interesting now is the struggles that non-binary people face when it comes to wearing makeup. Because obviously a lot of people um, well, a lot of non-binary people, you guys have shared your experiences of wanting to use makeup for different things. So for some of you, it is about changing your face shape to make it more feminine or more masculine at different times. In that case, it is useful, it's with a purpose. And so why would anyone complain about liking or not liking that when you're doing it, you know, for a use to make you feel more like yourself? Again, the people complaining there confuse me. Or the people who say that if you're non-binary you can't wear makeup because it's too feminine or whatever. I the judgments that people put on other people are just bizarre to me. And the thing is, I have to be honest, like I, like as a teenager, would often kind of be slightly judgmental of people wearing too much makeup. Because that, I don't want to sound horrible, but that is the culture that I grew up in where you judge people for having caked on foundation and blah blah blah. And now I look back and I'm like, well, that was just a bit mean, wasn't it? Because these are just young teenage girls who are just trying to feel good about themselves, who are just experimenting, who are just trying to figure it out. Like, for me to be judgmental and be like, well, you're wearing too much foundation, who was I to say that? I mean, I look through a lot of my makeup that I have here and, like, so much of it is just about the fun and the excitement and the exploration of trying out different things, different art materials, different colours. Like, no one could look at a palette like this with all these bright colours and assume I was trying to, I don't know, like, make myself look more, like, traditionally beautiful because in that case, why would I buy lime green and blue sparkly eyeshadow, you know? Colours like this, products like this, this is one of my favourite palettes, by the way. This is the Rainy Daydream Makeup Obsession palette. Love it. It's like 10 quid and you get, like, 16 stunning eyeshadows. Great value. So if you guys have been asking for my makeup recommendations, I'm going to do that as a separate video after this, so watch out for it. I know it won't interest all of you, but for some of you it might. But the point is, the, the, there's a lot of people as well who say things like, you know, that it looks fake or it's false advertising. It's like, well, of course it does. It's yellow eyeshadow. I don't naturally have yellow eyes. I don't naturally have purple lips. I don't naturally have glitter springing out of my every pore, although I kind of wish I did. So the criticism of something being like fake or not real, I'd be like, well of course it's not. But we weren't trying to pretend it was. If I was out here saying, so this is my natural face, the blue eyeliner just like 
grew naturally when I went through puberty, you know. Did that not happen to you? Oh, pity. What a shame. You know, that, that, that would be weird. It also kind of like brings me onto these thoughts about how um, we somehow put more like value or worth on, especially women, but kind of everyone, who are deemed as being more like naturally beautiful than others. Don't even get me started on the standards of what is beautiful and what isn't, and the cultural and racial differences there, and the weird double standards of the oh, that's a whole other video on a rant. But the fact that we put more emphasis on someone being naturally beautiful than someone who actually bothers to put time and care and effort into their appearance is again bizarre to me. Because someone who's naturally beautiful, who was just born that way, hasn't really done anything, have they? And why are you like congratulating something, someone for something that was so out of their control? It's like, oh well congratulations, you were born with all your working limbs and that somehow makes you better than these other people. You wouldn't say that, would you? Oh, well actually no, some people would and that's a whole other issue. But it's all very bizarre to me. And that's why I think as well, there's a lot of stigma around people not wanting to admit to things like getting plastic surgery or using certain makeups or whatever. Because there is a stigma and people think you are better if you're naturally that way instead of, you know, working for it. Whereas I think if with anything in life, if you know there's something you want and you can find a way to achieve that and you go ahead and do it, why is that something to be shamed? I think more power to you if you do that and you're happy with yourself and it's wonderful. But then again, we come to the other side of the issue where people do make changes or wear a lot of makeup or, or, or do any number of things because they are self-conscious and they're worried about how they look and they do feel the need to change something about themselves. Maybe it's just a low self-esteem thing. Maybe it's something they've specifically been bullied for. Maybe it's some kind of body dysmorphia. But again, there seems to be a definite kind of shaming language around mostly women, but other people as well, around people who, for example, wear makeup or get plastic surgery because they're insecure about something, as though that's something to look down on. When really, it's, it's not. It's something that deserves treating with compassion and kindness and understanding. We all have things that we're insecure about, but why do we have this language of shaming people who try and do something to make themselves more confident, you know? And interestingly, this is kind of one of the reasons I chose to come and make this video straight out of the shower, no makeup, no hair, nothing, in a baggy jumper, because I thought, well, I want to send this message that when I do wear makeup, it's my choice, and it's for the fun and the art and the creativity of it, not because I feel like I'm hiding something, not because I feel like I'm self-conscious about my face or anything like that. And now I'm here and I'm thinking, well, why do I care if people think I'm self-conscious about my face? If I was, that's not something to be ashamed about. And I've been very open in the past about the things that I am self-conscious about. For example, my teeth. Um, I've always had a lot of... Kyra, calm down. I've always had a lot of problems with my teeth. Um, I've got a lot of like fillings and work done on them and stuff. They've always been quite wonky and it's something I've always worried about. While I haven't had any work done to like straighten them or anything now, it's not something I'd rule out in the future. But somehow I think getting dental work, for example, is more socially acceptable than people who say, well, I'm self-conscious about, I don't know, my lips, for example, and want to get lip fillers, or I'm self-conscious about my acne and I want to cover it with some makeup, or I'm self-conscious about, um, my face shape and want to contour a little bit more to make it something I'm more comfortable with. There's so much stigma around changing certain parts of yourself but not others and maybe we need to think about why this is. Anyway, I guess the point of doing this here in front of all this makeup was to show you that you can't always judge a person by what you see on the outside. Just because a person enjoys makeup or has a lot of makeup, it doesn't necessarily mean they're insecure about something, it doesn't mean they're trying to cover something up. It can just mean they're artsy and creative. At the same time, a person could own like three bits of makeup and be very insecure about their appearance and very reliant on those three tiny bits of makeup they have. But you might not realise it because they're not presenting in a way where it's obvious they're wearing makeup or something like that. And in that case, well, in any case, if a person is self-conscious and using makeup or something else for whatever reason, again, that's not something to shame and look down on. And I don't necessarily think we should be saying to those people, well, you need to work on 
not wearing makeup. You need to learn that you're better without, because that's stupid, that's horrible, that's shaming, that's whatever. I think we should be saying to these people, hey, amazing, you're taking some steps to improve your confidence. And while you don't wanna get reliant on something external like makeup for your self-confidence self -confidence and self-esteem, it's amazing that you found something that is helping you for now and that's helping you continue your growth and to feel good about yourself, you know? The other thing I've seen a lot of so far in the comments that you guys have left me, and at this point I'm filming this, it's only been up for like an hour, so I'm probably gonna, let, gonna get a lot more responses before I film the next bit of this video. But one of the things I've seen is, kind of in contrast to everything else, is people saying that they don't have the confidence to wear, for example, bright makeup. And I completely understand this, because before I started YouTube, I was in the same position, and I felt very embarrassed or ashamed of for example, wearing red lipstick or wearing a bright coloured eyeshadow, anything that drew attention to me, I was terrified of because I thought people would judge me, I thought it would make people notice me and that was the last thing I wanted. And so I completely understand that and while you might want to wear bright makeup because it makes you feel good or because you love that colour or because you want to do something creative or whatever, you don't necessarily want all the attention that comes with it, you don't necessarily want people looking at you more closely. You don't want to open up a conversation about, well, why did you choose to wear that with someone? Um, and it, it can be very intimidating and very scary. I remember the first time I wore red lipstick out in public, like, my media studies teacher and my mum were both like, oh, that's very bright. And I was like, well, I'm not going to do this again for years. And I didn't. I was terrified. The fact that people were commenting and felt they had a right to suddenly ask me deep questions about my motivation and my feelings and why I'm doing this and why I chose to wear this and this and this just because I'm wearing red lipstick. It's bizarre to me. Why did no one ask me the same question when I'm wearing like a, a nude pink lipstick? Why did no one say to me, well, why are you wearing that today? Why did you make that choice? That's very natural. Why are you going for that? You don't get the same standards and Again, it's very bizarre, but also interesting to think about. I also get a lot of people who, when they, for example, see me in very girly clothes, like pretty dresses or wearing pretty, like, girly feminine makeup, for example, a lot of people assume that that's my only interest and hobby, or they don't take my other interests and hobbies seriously. Look at, like, Kent Hovind, for example, but not just him. M men, I've gone on, like, singular dates with <laughs> one date, there's a reason for this, have also assumed these things and it's not okay. They talk down to me and think they're smarter than me because they don't realise how intelligent I am because they judge me just from a pretty dress and a fair amount of makeup. Or I, I, <laughs> I had one guy who asked me, are you like really into gaming or are you just like a gamer girl? And I was like, what does that even mean? He's like, well, just looking at you, I'm like, stop right there. Like, this conversation isn't going any further. And again, yeah, he judged me because he was like, well, you're really good at makeup. I'm like, well, I know I'm good at makeup. That doesn't mean I don't also enjoy playing PlayStation in my spare time. That doesn't also mean I don't read comics and I'm interested in science and I'm very well educated and I read a lot and I, I I can't remember what else I do, and then I paint a lot and all this stuff. But basically the point is he started questioning all my nerdier hobbies and interests because apparently it was different to like the outward appearance I had on me that day. And he was like, well I just not met anyone who like looks like this and is into board games. I'm like, now you have? What's your point? And I just find it very bizarre. Because again, another thing I saw a couple of people saying is that they felt that in their like work and careers they couldn't wear the makeup they wanted to because they were kind of shamed for it or spoken down to because of it or looked down on or whatever. Like I think, I can't remember the exact details but there was someone who said I think maybe they worked in science or maybe archaeology or something like that. It was a really cool job anyway. And um, she said that she mostly had male colleagues and felt like at work she couldn't wear the makeup she wanted to because she'd be heavily judged by them. And that's just not okay. You shouldn't have to change your outward appearance to be taken seriously in any field. And I say this not only for makeup, but in all kinds of areas. And while it has traditionally been a thing that, well, to work in 
this, this and this field, you need to present a certain way and you need to look a certain way and you but that's so outdated. And surely we need to be getting to a point now where we can see past all that crap and just understand that people can be good at their jobs and people can have the skills and knowledge necessarily necessary to complete, complete I can't even speak, a job well without looking a certain way. And like I say, it's not just makeup or clothes or anything like that. There's been huge backlash against certain people of certain cultures because they do something that is normal in one culture that isn't in another and they're told it's not professional, it's not this, and that's stupid. Absolutely stupid. A hairstyle or a piece of jewellery or um, bait, ugh, anything, or an item of clothing that has cultural significance does not stop someone doing their job. Makeup does not stop someone doing their job. And therefore, the fact that we still judge people for these things is ridiculous to me and outdated and we need to work on realising that that's stupid. Anyway, I've probably not covered everything, this is just a rant. Um, for the next part of my video, I'm just going to switch to voiceover stuff and read out a few of your comments and experiences uh, so we can discuss them down in the comments. But please let me know what you've thought about my rant so far. Like I said, I probably missed out a lot, but let me, let me know your thoughts and your own personal experiences and everything, please. So to start with, I'm just going to like remind you guys what I asked you. Um, so I posted this over on my community tab and on Instagram. And I said, I, I basically gave you three questions. Um, first one being, whether you're female, male or non-binary, do you ever feel like you face stigma or judgment for wearing makeup? If so, do you mind sharing some of your experiences, please? Two was, do you ever make judgments about other people wearing makeup? And if so, what? Three was, have you ever told someone or been told by someone that you look better without makeup? If so, how did this make you feel? Or why did you say this to a person? And four was, how would you feel if someone spoke to you about any of your hobbies the way some people speak about makeup for example that canvas looked better without any paint or oh you're building lego who are you trying to impress and so this was kind of like to kind of get people thinking about people using makeup in a different way and this one was really illuminating in particular because i found a lot of people saying that makeup isn't a hobby and makeup is something like kind of to politicize or makeup is something that um, changes your market value like that oh that was actually a disgusting word someone used so this one was an interesting one but overall I think a lot of us tend to be on the same page there are a few outliers but mostly I was just very very interested with a lot of your experiences as I think I said in the recorded video it's actually a while since I recorded that so I can't remember my exact words but a lot of people who were non-binary had really really interesting experiences I wasn't um I, I guess aware of if that makes sense so like thank you all for educating me and sharing your experiences but just all of you in particular have really interesting things to say and I think it's going to open up a lot of discussions and that's why I wanted to include this segment in the video with YouTube and Instagram and all the direct messages I got on there I probably got close to somewhere like 600 replies so sadly I can't read them all but Thank you all so much for getting involved in this conversation because like I say, amazing. So I think for now, we're just gonna start with some of the top comments on YouTube and some of the other little bits that I got and we'll kind of work from here. Um, I don't know how many people want their names mentioned and stuff. So for, I, I guess like privacy, I'm just gonna keep everyone anonymous if that's okay. Yeah, thank you to everyone who responded because you're amazing. Uh, one comment here reads, to be honest, I hate the saying, you look better without makeup so much. The way I see it, if you compliment someone's makeup or say how pretty they look with it, you're complimenting their talent and skill, which I think is a good type of thing to compliment. But to tell someone they're pretty without makeup, so their facial features and bone structure, is to compliment something they can't even control. Like, wouldn't you rather be complimented on your heart, uh, on your art and hard-earned skills than on your genetics? I wish people would see how weird that is. And I'm just like, yes, this is exactly what I've been saying, and I'm so glad I'm not the only one who sees this. I mean like of course it must be lovely if you're born pretty but I would rather be complimented for things I can control rather than things that I that just like I don't know come natural to me like I always found it quite insulting in school when people would be like oh well you're naturally smart I'm like no I'm not I work very very hard and I wish people wouldn't just say it was like a, a natural thing and kind of undermine all the hard work I put in you know one of the replies to this said it should be fine to compliment someone's natural features what's not okay is to put people down because of them but they do go hand in hand together so it's hard to have one without the other and I think that's a good point because like I'm not saying we shouldn't compliment people who are naturally good at something or naturally pretty or naturally whatever like I'm not saying never compliment them I'm just saying maybe don't 
quite put as much emphasis on it because I don't know I guess it's not not all that important and um, this person says as a man I get poop for it by men almost exclusively usually women hype me up a bit and love it a lot of girls even find it attractive it's always men that tell me I shouldn't wear it I still don't leave the house with it because I'm scared of what other men will do if they don't like it which is heartbreaking to me but sadly this is something I've seen a hell of a lot and it is interesting why I, I guess like a lot of men almost seem threatened by other men who are so comfortable in their sexuality and their gender identity and just their self-acceptance and knowing who they are. It's almost like some men feel threatened by that, especially the ones that have been brought up with this idea that there's only one way to be a man or masculine or something like that. And I find it very, very odd, but I guess to, to people like this kind of here, I know you probably hear it a lot, but I think these kinds of comments say a hell of a lot more about the person insulting you than it says about you. The fact that you have this amazing confidence to just go out and be yourself, whether that means wearing makeup or not wearing makeup, the fact is when people can just do what makes them happy, that's something amazing and strong to be celebrated. And like I say, it says a lot more about the people insulting you than it does about you. But obviously that's easier to say than it is to live you know I, I completely understand that and I can understand the fear as well of you know what men will do if they don't like it as as a woman and quite a small and weak woman <laughs> I guess that's something that I have to experience almost daily and I think it's something that a lot of my viewers experience as well who have kind of struggled in one way or another so yeah thank you for kind of bringing up that point and reminding us that you know, while it's easy to sit here and preach about like, oh, do what makes you happy, be yourself. We also have to remember that it's important to stay safe. And while it would be nice if everyone was accepting in the world and it's important to work towards that, we also have to be realistic and make sure that people are looking after each other and looking after themselves and not putting themselves in very real danger. This next comment really broke my heart a little bit. Um, as someone who's been judged publicly as a witness on a stand, there was an impossibly narrow unspoken standard with makeup. If I wore too much or the wrong colours or finishes, I would be perceived as less credible and put together. But if I wore none, I would be considered as someone who didn't care about herself and her appearance. I remember worrying about what makeup was appropriate because even though my makeup had no bearing on my words, there's a history in my country of jury members being swayed by physical appearance and grooming when none of that should influence a testimony. Since when did a bit of highlighter or a pop of colour impact the weight or credibility of someone's words? It made testifying brutal because I was worried people would be judging my face, not just my words. It made what I had to do so much more difficult. It made me afraid of makeup for a while. And this just absolutely broke my heart. And this is something that we've definitely seen not only in, I guess, criminal, criminal cases like this, but just in the media as well, where people are judged so strongly because of their appearance. And I've seen it in a few other comments from people as well, with people saying that they get judged at work for how much makeup they wear, or their colleagues only take them seriously when they wear a certain amount of makeup or not. And I just think it's quite ridiculous. And it, it, it does kind of make me sad and upset me a bit, because you would hope at this point we'd be over you know, the part where we, we judge people by what we see and not how they act, but we're still here and it's sad. And I guess we just kind of have to think about where we go from here and how we go forward and how we try and ensure this doesn't happen, how we educate other people so they know not to do this. And also thinking about our own actions and making sure we don't accidentally judge people in this way because unconscious biases are incredibly common. They're a part of being human. They're what's in our brain. Um, and we do have, basically, on, on a very quick, immediate, just happening kind of level, we do make snap judgments on people based on their appearance. And it's, it's, it's a consequence of evolution. We, we evolved that quick response to try and stay safe. So we could recognize, is this person in our tribe, our group, our family, our safe place? people like are, are these people good or not the snap judgments kept us safe for hundreds thousands of years but as a society we've kind of passed that point now where we don't need to make those snap judgments to stay alive all the time and so it's important that we kind of remember that those biases are present and that in day-to-day -day life we need to slow down and not be swayed by them and think a little more slowly and a little more logically and let our conscious opinions kind of take over instead. Does that does that make sense? I did a whole video on this like three years ago, kind of looking at the neuroscience behind it. And it's really, really interesting stuff. But again, yeah, there's a lot we can say about that and it's, it's probably 
worth a whole other video as well as the old one that I made, but I'll, if I can find it, I'll try and link it in the comments. This was an amazing, incredibly detailed answer. Um, I'm a woman and I would say I've faced stigma for both wearing makeup and going without it. I used to live in a very liberal suburb in the US and there I alternated between wearing no makeup and heavy makeup whenever I felt like it. I faced no social cons consequences for doing either and it was great. However, I currently live in a village in India where pretty much all women wear eyeliner, um, kajal, a bindi and nothing else. It's definitely considered weird here if you do anything but that. When I wear no makeup, which is most of the time, family members as well as strangers of all genders will tell me to go put some on because I don't look like a real woman. When I do what everyone else does, they act like it's a miracle and tease me about finally coming around, which makes me uncomfortable. And when I wear more makeup than what's expected, they think I'm doing it to impress someone else. And actually it's interesting because on the second question that I asked, they did bring up unconscious biases. So um, she said, I try not to. I do think I have some unconscious biases, but I'm trying really hard to fix them. It would probably not... I would probably naturally perceive someone who wore light makeup to be more competent than someone who wore heavy or no makeup. This is something I'm trying to overcome though, and I think it's definitely getting better. And I think that's a fantastic, amazing, brilliant mindset to have because she's aware of the unconscious biases and she's trying to overcome them. So she's not being unrealistic, um, but she's doing a good thing and being a good person and working on the flaws that all humans have and like just being accepting. And I think that's wonderful. In regards to the other question, she answered, I, uh, I used to wear heavy makeup only around my nose because I was insecure about it. I asked my sister once if I looked better with or without makeup and she admitted that I looked better without it probably because I tried too hard to change the entire shape of my nose without applying much anywhere else. Anyway, what she said actually made me feel a lot better about my natural features, so I appreciated the comment. And I think the important thing to note there is that she asked her sister about it. It wasn't unsolicited advice or an opinion, so that's an important thing to note there. This comment here was really illuminating to me. I'm a trans guy, and nowadays I appreciate makeup if I think it's artistic or aesthetically pleasing but back when I thought I was a girl I used to be really judgmental of people wearing makeup especially women because I felt they were trying to impose a version of femininity on me that in my mind at the time was constructed by patriarchal beauty standards and the cosmetics industry so my snap judgment used to be that anyone wearing makeup was just a victim of these institutions and didn't know any better and any true feminist wouldn't wear makeup Obviously, I don't think this anymore, but unfortunately, there are strands of feminism that encourage this thinking. And seriously, like, shout out to this guy for being so, like, self-aware and amazing. Love it. Again, this is the kind of comment I love to read because you can really see that he's working on himself and his worldviews and just trying to be better. And that's, that's fantastic. I love that. But... Again, it does get you thinking about the people who are judgmental. Why are they this way? Is it because of some insecurity within themselves? Is it because of something they're not happy with within themselves? Is it because they feel maybe manipulated in some way? Is it because they have been manipulated in some way by the media or society or uh, the people around them or, or even in some cases maybe like religion or politics or something like that? It's, it's interesting and I think sometimes there's a lot more to it than just, oh, this person's judgmental. And so I think we need a little compassion for the people who are being judgmental as well as those being judged. And that that's actually something that I get criticised for quite a lot. I have a lot of people saying that I go too easy on people, although I also have a lot of people call me a bitch as well, so it's kind of like I can't win. But some people say I go too easy on people, and I'm like, but that's because they're still people. I don't just want to be outright nasty to someone because I disagree with them. I want to understand why they have this viewpoint, because once we understand that, we can try and actually have a conversation and work through things and hopefully stop people being judgmental and mean about others, you know? You don't help someone not be judgmental by being judgmental in return. Here's another couple of comments I wanna read for you. Um, so this person here says they're a non-binary um, assigned female at birth on testosterone. They said that, yeah, I sometimes make snap judgments. Doing my own makeup seriously for a while with very little to work with gave me a better appreciation the same way I appreciate great, I, the same way I appreciate art regardless of skill level because I understand the steps it took to reach my own level and how very skilled artists took their own steps. I wore lipstick that smudged and coloured my eyebrows unusually dark, but to my own perception, it was what I could do and liked enough to wear. Yeah, the comments I'd get from men fazed me so much less than the ones from women, especially my peers. A girl at school saying I looked nice without my eyeliner meant a lot to me. If I ever said it, if I ever said it, as I can't recall, it was because I felt the need to reassure somebody they don't need to do something. A lot of assumptions there. Uh, this person said, um, my mum always laughs at me when I wear lipstick because my lips look clown. -ish. I think she feels that way because I rarely wear makeup, but her comments make me feel stared at and insecure even though I think I look good in the mirror. I usually wear lip gloss now just to get her off my back, otherwise I only get compliments when wearing makeup even though it's never much more than mascara. And to this I have to say I have had the exact same experience 
and my mum was, I don't know if she meant to be, but she was quite judgy this one time when she saw me wearing like an orangey toned red lipstick and I didn't wear red lipstick for like four years afterwards and it, it, it really made me sad and it made me insecure. Um, and what I will say to you is, regardless of your mum's reasons for doing that, don't let her stop you doing something or wearing something you love. The fun thing about wearing makeup is that regardless of who you are, if you've worn makeup at any point, you will have made some bad choices and you will have worn some silly stuff and you will have looked silly at times, but we've all been there. I have definitely, 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 definitely been there. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that it's it's a very human thing and it's all part of the learning process and the growing process but the thing is you just need to kind of like work through it and have fun and keep experimenting and keep doing what you love and keep loving what you wear it's as I, I keep saying this it's easier said than done but you can't like comments like what your mum said here get you down because chances are one she wasn't right and two it doesn't matter what she thinks what matters is that you love what you're wearing and if you want to wear lipstick, you keep wearing lipstick. Like, just do it, own it, and just be like, yeah, screw you to anyone who cares otherwise. You know? <laughs> oh, this person as well. Th this was such an, ex an interesting experience that I found a lot of non-binary people sharing um, about how they use makeup in, in different ways depending on how they want to express themselves at the time. This was really kind of like illuminating and I find it so interesting. Um, so they said, yes, I switch between femme and mask a lot and wear makeup when I present as both. I mostly present as femme. I wear femme makeup to accentuate my more feminine features and always feel like people are judging me for wearing too much. Whenever I wear it while presenting mask, for example, contouring and adding bags under my eyes, I again feel strange as mask presenting people wearing makeup is something that's still very stigmatized. Especially as a non-binary person, I often feel that by wearing makeup, I'm presenting too femme and that people will view me as a woman. And this was something that obviously I've never experienced, so I didn't really think about before. So I want to say thank you to everyone who shared this and kind of opened my eyes to this because it is really interesting. And it's definitely kind of making me, I, I guess, like more aware, but also I want to be more considerate of the non-binary people I see wearing makeup because it's opened my eyes to kind of like this stigma that I didn't realize was there. And that now that I know about, I, oft, I, all, yeah, I of course kind of want to help fight against, if that makes sense. And this is something that really brings up some important points because the idea that we see makeup as a feminine thing and no makeup as a masculine thing is damaging to every single gender and every single person and it's so outdated and we just need to stop it. I think the idea of using makeup to make yourself feel more like yourself, for example, when you're presenting as more masculine and you want to make your face a little more traditionally masculine, using makeup for that is such a smart thing to do and if you can pull it off and make it look great why wouldn't you you know and so I think the fact that there's any stigma around that and that they can do something to make themselves feel more masculine and more themselves and yet still be called feminine is just insane it's it's completely unfair and ridiculous and that's something that I think as a society we need to work on and get over and stop making makeup a gendered thing you know I think the more we see men and non-binary people wearing makeup and the more we normalize that the more we'll start to realize that it's not a gendered thing and that's why it's so important to have these kinds of conversations and talk about this stuff you know i also want to point out as well that there's definitely kind of like a cultural aspect to this kind of thing as well so i've seen a lot of um men from like america and the uk commenting saying that like they sometimes feel a little bit judged for wearing makeup but they'll still sometimes do it and they'll just get the odd comment but I also had a lot of people coming from other countries. For example, I think a few people mentioned like India and a few other Asian countries, um, especially men saying that they kind of want to wear makeup, but they don't feel safe doing so or they feel uncomfortable doing so. And it kind of made me realize that even though there's definitely um, an issue and stigma around it in the kind of more Western country, I'm not good with direction, in the more Western countries, it's not just a stigma thing in other countries. It can be a danger thing as well and a safety issue. And so, again, that's something that I think we need to be aware of that absolutely breaks my heart. The fact that something as simple as wearing makeup can be something that puts someone's life in danger. And that is heartbreaking. And again, something that we need to be aware of and talk about more. And that's why these kinds of conversations are important, you know? Does that make sense? Yeah? <laughs>
There's a great comment here that pointed out, I'm in university and I've noticed that when women wear makeup, our intelligence gets questioned or doubted more because of it. And this was something that I've seen in a few different comments, people saying they weren't taken seriously at work when they wear makeup, um, when they're in quite like academic jobs. Whereas other people interestingly said they weren't taken seriously at work when they didn't wear makeup if they were in, for example, customer facing jobs, which is a very odd double standard there, isn't it? It's, oh, that's, that's something to talk about. Like. If, if you wear makeup, you have better social skills, but if you wear makeup, you can't be academic. Is that what people are, ooh, ooh, it's bad, isn't it? That's something that bothers me a lot. Something that I've been experiencing a lot as well, like the people who think I can't be intelligent when I wear makeup, like <clears throat> Ken Ham, but it's ridiculous. Like, are you really gonna assume that a person can't be both creative and intelligent because there is a very strong correlation there between creativity and intelligence. And it's, oh, why would you not think there is? It, um. Okay, here's an annoying comment. I feel like if you're asking questions for a video, they should be more objective. It's painfully clear from these questions what your stance is and what your answers and what answers you want to hear, especially the last question is very lazy and doesn't make sense with the topic. Like, I'm sorry, but I'm not objective. I do have a stance and people are very, very welcome to disagree with that stance. Like. It's obvious, but I'm not going to pretend I don't have an opinion when I do. I'm not writing an academic paper here, I'm making an opinion piece. <laughs> it's as simple as that. And I don't think the last question's lazy, and I think it makes perfect sense. So many people don't take makeup seriously as an artistic and creative pursuit, when it absolutely is. And the fact that people have politicised makeup, which is an art form, the fact that people... Um, judge people and stuff for an art form is ridiculous and the, the the point of that last question I think is the fact that for so long makeup has been viewed as this purely like practical thing to 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 trick men or to change women's appearance or do it's been viewed as a, as a marketing tool for women and all that kind of crap and that last question is pointing out that no it's not it's a creative pursuit it's an artistic hobby and while some people can choose to politicize it or use it for some agenda or whatever, um, I don't think it should be. I want to try and move away from those like gendered stereotypes and all that crap and just kind of like, it's important to speak about how society views people who wear makeup, of course, that's the whole point of this video, but ultimately I want to say that despite all of this, it is a creative and artistic hobby and how would you feel if other people were talking about your other hobbies and the way we talk about makeup? How would you feel if someone suddenly tried to politicize the fact that you paint watercolors or that you like rollerblading or um, you collect stamps? It might seem illogical to this person, but it's not at all. And so that the whole point of that question in this video is to try and kind of get people to see things in a slightly different light and ask the questions that you maybe haven't asked before. So screw this person. <laughs> Moving on. Sorry, little rant there. Oh, here's a very interesting point that I haven't covered yet. So this person says, cis female here, I wish I could wear makeup, but it's very expensive and I have acne, so it seems kind of not for me. It also seems very time consuming and I struggle with depression. If I'm feeling myself, I'll curl my eyelashes or try to put on fake lashes. So amazing little point here about class divides and makeup and what's expected of us, but also like money, right? I definitely felt when I was younger that I couldn't express myself in the way that I wanted to, I couldn't look the way I wanted to, because I simply couldn't afford to, and it was a huge problem. Like, it's only in these last couple of years that I've been able to live comfortably, and because of that, spend more money on my hobbies like buying makeup. Before I was maybe 24, something like that, I couldn't afford to do that. I just didn't have the money to spend on makeup, especially not good quality makeup. And I definitely, definitely didn't have it in my teenage years. So the fact that we judge people for the kinds of makeup they wear, the time they can put into, I, we'll cover time in a minute actually, but the fact that we judge people for the kinds of makeup they wear and if they wear it or not is such, Again, I think a slight elitist thing to do because not everyone can afford to wear makeup. So for all these people saying that they get judged for not wearing makeup when they're in like say a customer service job is so odd to me because like, you know, when you think about it, I mean, you can do good makeup on a budget obviously and I 
don't spend the earth on makeup, I don't buy expensive fancy makeup, but you have to remember that not everyone can afford to buy any makeup at all. So when you do make judgments about people, especially women, for not wearing makeup, you maybe have to think, why? Sometimes it's not just because they don't want to, it's not because they're lazy, it's not because of any of these other stereotypes that you want to put on them, sometimes it could be because they can't afford it. And so making judgments for that is a very kind of like elitist way of looking at things. And yeah, I guess that's something that, I don't know, I've always been slightly aware of, but I guess I didn't really think before reading this comment, so thank you for bringing that up. Seriously, thank you. Also the whole like time consuming thing as well and struggling with depression, like yeah, when I'm going through my rough patches, I absolutely don't wear makeup and I think that's very normal. I guess it, when I'm like that as well, it does make me sad when people point out that I look tired or I look ill or anything like that when I'm not wearing makeup because I'm like, yes, I am tired and I am ill and I am a mess and I'm falling apart. You don't need to bring it up. You don't need to point it out. So that's quite interesting. And also, yeah, I absolutely, just on a personal level, didn't wear as much makeup when I was in like a regular nine to five job because I didn't have the time, because I'm not good with mornings, because I'm, I'm a mess in the mornings. <laughs> I was always in a rush, I was always late for stuff. It's the nightmare. It's only now that I'm actually working for myself and that often applying makeup is part of my job or it's something that I do, you know, like as a hobby when I've got some free time. It's only because of all those circumstances that I actually like wear makeup and enjoy it and have the time to do it well. If I'm just, for example, going out for like coffee with a friend or I've got like a meeting for a, I guess like a work thing or something like that or I'm in a rush I don't generally wear makeup because it is a time consuming thing to do which is why it's more of a hobby for me than like a daily part of my routine and I think that's something to think about as well when you're comparing yourself to people whose makeup you see in photos online like on Instagram or YouTubers or whatever you've got to remember that for me kind of wearing makeup is something that I've chosen to be part of my job because I like it being part of my brand and my image and expressing who I am through it, you know. But that also means that I put time aside in my work day to do my makeup before a video, for example, or anything else. And so for the average person working a nine to five job where makeup isn't part of your job, I don't think you should feel bad or compare yourself if you don't have the same amount of time as someone who, you know, is doing makeup for their job. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know if I'm expressing myself well here. This is what happens when I just kind of ran into a microphone. <laughs> um, and anyway, on, on that note, I think I've absolutely ranted for too long at this point, but um, I absolutely thank everyone who shared their opinions and views and comments and everything with me on this because it's been absolutely fascinating. And I really, really recommend that you go and um, read a lot of the comments in the thread over on my community tab. I'll leave a link down in the description of this video. Fascinating stuff. You guys have some incredible insights and experiences. And um, th there was a great comment as well that I can't find now, but I know I read it about a woman who has a like neurological disorder. And she says that people changing makeup often makes it hard for her to recognize their faces which was a really, really interesting thing that I never even considered. So God, that just brings up a whole other conversation, doesn't it? About kind of, I, I guess, kind of like abilities to apply makeup, about like women like this who don't always recognize people when they have changing makeup, the kind of what effect that has on other people. It, amazing, interesting stuff but I don't have time to talk about everything now. So I'm gonna zoom back over to past me for the little outro, but thanks for listening today, thanks for sharing. Please go read what everyone has to say because fascinating stuff. Anyway, there were your experiences and um, thank you for sharing them with me. Please share the rest of your experiences and stuff down in the comments below. And uh, thank you for watching today. Thank you for putting up with me while I'm ranting, especially when I look like this. And um, I will see you again very, very soon. Thanks a lot.